Hi, I'm Mark Parsamian. In this video, I'll be doing a couple of examples in which one has to use first the product rule and then the chain rule. This material is from section 3.4, but there is no particular discussion or example of this kind of problem in section 3.4. The corresponding homework is this pair of problems from uh, section 3.4. So remember our derivative rules, the basic rules from section 2.5, the derivative rules for exponential functions and log functions from section 3.2, the product rule and quotient rule from section 3.3, and the chain rule from the current section 3.4. All right, example one. Let f of x be this function find f prime of x. So how do we attack this problem? Well, notice there is a lot of stuff going on in this expression. There's an x squared minus 5. That's sitting inside of this expression. So there's a composition of functions over here in this red circle. But completely separate from that is this expression. So looking from the outside, we, we see these two functions, the green function on the left and the red function on the right, that are being multiplied. So since we have a product of two functions, we have to use the product rule. Let's go review the product rule. The product rule says this. The derivative of a product, g times h, is g prime times h plus g times h prime. So let's apply that to our current problem. So there's the product rule. Notice that we did not do those derivatives in that first step. We just set them up with the product rule. Now in the second step, we're going to do those derivatives. Now we'll start by leaving a space for those derivatives and copying down all the stuff that's not going to change. Now the derivative on the left is easy. The derivative of 7x we just do with the power rule. That whole derivative is just the number 7. But this derivative on the right is harder. We have to use the chain rule. Remember, the topic for the video is product rule, then chain rule. So we're going to use the chain rule now. Now let's put the, the chain rule details over on the side. So our outer function is the e to the parentheses function. That's the empty version. So its derivative is e to the parentheses. So there are all our chain rule details, and we'll assemble them. Remember what the chain rule says. The chain rule says the derivative of one of these things is this, outer prime parentheses inner times inner prime. So I do outer prime, that's e to the parentheses, and then I have to put in the parentheses the inner function. I have to build this outer prime and put inside of it the original inner function. Well, for that I'll need a little bit more room. And then I have to multiply all this by inner prime. So when I simplify this, it becomes that expression. Now look, I can simplify this even more because there is a factor that's common to both of these. So I'm going to write that factor off to the side and leave parentheses showing what was left behind. And there is our result. Let's go on. Example 2. I have to find this derivative. All right, let's just dive right in. All right, well notice again we have a green function sitting next to a red function. They're being multiplied, so we have to use the product rule. So there's our product rule result. Now we'll do the next step. We'll 
uh, do these derivatives. We'll leave space for them and we'll start by copying down the stuff that's not going to change. Now the derivative on the left is easy. It's a basic uh, derivative uh, that's in power function form. So its derivative is 2 times 2x. But the derivative on the right involves a nested function, a composition of function. So we're going to have to use the chain rule. So that result will go here. Now let's review the chain rule. The chain rule says the derivative of, of a nested function is this. So if we call the original function outer parentheses, inner parentheses x, we have to build this thing, outer prime parentheses, inner parentheses x, times inner prime parentheses x. So let's go down and get these parts and then assemble this expression. So our inner function is x cubed minus 3, so its derivative is easy. Our outer function is a power function. And we write it in its empty form. And we find its derivative using the power rule. If the function was x to the fourth, its derivative would be 4x cubed. But the function is empty, it's parentheses to the fourth, so its derivative is 4 times parentheses cubed. So there are our chain rule details. Let's remember how to assemble them. We need to build this outer prime parentheses inner times inner prime. So there's our outer prime. Now we need to do outer prime parentheses inner. We need to build that. So we need to put the inner function inside of those parentheses. So the inner function is here. Then we need to multiply this by our inner prime, which is this thing. Now we can clean this up quite a bit. Now we can even clean this up more. Notice that there are a bunch of common factors. There is certainly a common factor of 4 here and over here there's a 4 because there's a 24 there. Notice there's also a common factor of x, because there's an x there and there's an x to the fourth there. So I can factor out that. Also notice that there's a x cubed minus 3 to the third power there, and there's an x cubed minus 3 to the fourth power there. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify all of the common factors, and I'm going to rewrite this function so that each of these terms, this one, and this one have those common factors separate from the rest of the stuff in those terms. So in that factor, I separated these three things from the rest of the stuff, which just happened to be this. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the, the other term. So there I separated out a 4x times x cubed minus 3 to the cube. And what was left over here was this thing. So now you see that I've just simply rewritten those two expressions. I wrote that one like that, and I wrote that one like that. The reason I did that is because now it's easy to see very clearly what their common factor is. The common factor is all this stuff. So I'm going to factor out that stuff it's going to end up out front. And then what's it going to leave behind? It's going to leave behind all that other stuff. So it's going to leave behind all this stuff, and it's going to leave behind this stuff. Isn't that cool? So you factor out that expression, and it leaves behind these two terms. Now we can simplify what's in that square bracket further. And there is our derivative. So it, it involved the product rule and the chain rule and a whole bunch of simplifying. All right, well, that's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.